Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that. If you're returning, how you doing? Okay. Remember the year 2022? It feels like it was just yesterday. <laughs> oh my God. I'm kidding. So listen, it was full of surprises, was it not? I mean, you got the invasion, the persistent inflation, fueled by energy costs, the collapse of FTX, crypto markets, the revelations of so-called Twitter files, and one of the worst equity markets in recent history. And that's just to name a few, you know? Now, we're in the year 2023, okay? It is poised to present some equally challenging circumstances. There are trends, events, surprises, that may come to shape and define the year ahead. And here they are. So, the first one, inflation returns like it ever left, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously. This, uh, we have not seen the end or even the worst of inflation in the United States. I'm serious. I mean, if you think about it, <laughs> we have not seen prices like these in like forever. Okay. And uh, it's not going to get any better. I mean, it's going to persist for the rest of the year, if not four years. And this will be cost push inflation, not demand pull. Now, a lagging result of troubling the money supply in the United States since 2009. Look at what happened in 2008 and 2009. Okay. Stagflation has returned, my friends. What the misery index hitting new highs. Hey. Okay. Now the second one. The U.S. economy enters a recession. Oh, nay, nay. <laughs> We're already there. You know, this is a less controversial proposition at this stage as most economists and analysts agree that this recession looks highly probable. They say it's highly probable. I say we're already there, but I digress. And the next one is the European energy crisis will worsen. So while in the near term, okay, Western Europe may be spared the worst possible outcomes due to a mild winter. The underlying factors which led to the energy crisis has not been resolved, okay? So they could possibly still face some dire circumstances there, all right? So Germany, okay, the European Union's largest economy made a bargain, okay? Believing that it could abandon it's coal industry and any nuclear aspiration and instead place their trust with the Russians. I know against all historical experience here and a green utopia. What's that saying? The grass isn't always greener on the other side, but I'll go on. So the next one, is oil, crypto, and gold perform. Energy markets will continue to bull run for the foreseeable future as a result of continued supply disruptions and refinery constraints. Bitcoin, Ethereum emerge from a long dark crypto winter, but altcoins, A-L-T-C-O-I-N-S, remain frozen cut. Okay, they frozen out. Um, the dollar begins a long, if slow and turbulent slide from 2022 highs as peak demand from rapidly rising interest rates eases. Now, the next one, continued rise of resource nationalism. The unforgettable <laughs> geopolitical lesson of the pandemic era has been that just in time supply chain dependence on countries that many or may not 
have another nation's interest at heart represents a dangerous strategic folly here. It's well and good that we learned this lesson when we did, okay? Countries around the world are now aggressively working to realign their supply chains and ensure that they have, a, have strategic resources in adequate supply to meet unexpected black swan events. You've heard of black swan events, have you not? So look for increasingly protectionist and nationalistic uh, policies, if you will, to dominate trade discussions, okay? The next one is traditional global alliances break and new ones start to form. Longstanding partnerships, such as the United States, the relationship with Saudi Arabia, have already begun to unravel. Expect further strengthening of the China and uh, Russia-led alliance involving former U.S. allies, or at least non-aligned nations like India, Turkey, South Africa, Brazil, okay? Most vulnerable or geopolitical shifts are countries in Africa, Southeast Asia, South America, because of sanctions, warfare, and incoherent or at least inconsistent foreign policy. The United States ends up in a net deficit position, losing more friends than it gains in this process. So the next one is the US dominance, dollar dominance rather, uh, continues to erode. So, okay, hard, hard money returns to favor with commodity backed currencies taking the spotlight. Alt payment systems, okay, petro dollars being replaced with petro rubles or petro yuans, uh, as, as well as CBDC, um, will all conspire to slowly erode the US dollar's share of the global financial and trade flows, okay? The next one is the, the West weary of cost uh, of the invasion, sues for peace, okay? Now, while it may not be realistic to think that Russia can do what they want and take out what they want and try to control what they want and things like that, okay? Um, and, and, you know, scare people into submission and, and you know, just do what, whatever they want because his ego has just blown up his head, but whatever. The increasing cost, okay, of supporting such things okay, like the invasion and blah, 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 will challenge political leaders in the West, okay? This fatigue will increase as more citizens start to ask reasonable questions, become more rational with their thinking, if you will, okay? Uh, uh, you know, about whether hundreds of billions of dollars or euros or whatever, okay, w might not be better spent to take on some of this domestic, economic, and social challenges that these nations, face, nations are facing at home. Eventually, Western governments and Putin each decide that a half of a loaf is better than no loaf at all. That's their way of thinking. So the next one is domino effect of exposure. The recent uncovering of level-headed frauds and corruptions involving U.S. government agencies and personal continues. So increasing transparency leads to accountability. Eventually, the evidence becomes too overwhelming to ignore, like arrests and trials, convictions, and blah, blah, blah. Congressional hearings lead to a wave of resignations and first steps toward fundamental institutional reform. The next one is China barks but does not bite at Taiwan. While we should expect a Rottweiler, but yet we get a ankle biter, <laughs> if you will. Okay, it's like, you know, you would you know, expect the growling and the barking to get louder and louder and louder and louder, you know, 
with more frequent airspace incursions and naval activity, intimidations and outright threats, and you know how they are. They, what's the, what's the saying? Their bark is, what's the saying? Is louder or it hurts more than their butt, something like that, I can't remember. So it is highly unlikely that China will invade Taiwan in 2023. While, most, while China mostly certainly would prefer to confront Taiwan, while the potato administration remains in power, rather than face an improbable return of 45, The Chinese government will conclude that they are not ready militarily, politically, or otherwise to invade Taiwan. Domestic issues, including a worsening economy, rising social unrest, just within the mainland of China, will mean that creating a row with the United States and other trading partners in the West remains untenable for the time being. So that's that. Now the next one, second half rebound in economy and markets. <sighs> there is enormous unleashed latent potential in oil and gas, in manufacturing, onshoring, in supply chain realignment, and in new technologies such as AI, quantum computing, blockchain, and cold fusion. While I'm not optimistic about the first half of this, the second half rebound in economy and markets, okay, I take great comfort in the breadth and resilience of the American economy. We always seem to bounce back with the right administration, of course, <laughs> but I'll go on. So the last one is more of the same. What could or would derail a more V-shaped recovery are the same forces that helped bring the recession about poor policy decisions that continue uh, to damage our energy industry, keep our borders insecure, uh, fail to dismantle the out of control regulatory bu bureaucracy that is impeding innovation and, and, and energy manufacturing, uh, financial services, technology. These are some of the largest sectors in this economy and those which have been most negatively affected by the Biden administration's imprudent return to the 44 hour economic policies. That's just, you know, that's how a lot of people are seeing it. That's how I'm seeing it. Nothing's going to change unless we have a new administration. I could be wrong. I know I could be wrong, but maybe I'm right. I don't know. What do you think? Okay, I'm out of here. I'll see you in the next one, okay? You stay safe. You stay positive. You keep prepping. And as always, fearless.